Welcome to the Fast Track Cities podcast series, which is brought to you by the International Association of Providers of AIDS Care, or IAPAC. This podcast series chronicles an ongoing worldwide initiative to end urban HIV epidemics by 2030. Each episode features the voices of clinicians, community advocates, policymakers, and people living with HIV from across the Fast Track Cities network each striving to get to zero new HIV infections, zero AIDS-related deaths, and zero HIV stigma in their cities. And now your host, Susan Berkeley. Public perceptions about HIV and people living with HIV have evolved since the early 1980s, in most instances for the better. But although considerable progress has been made over the several decades since the advent of what would become a global HIV pandemic, public literacy about HIV has lagged behind new scientific insights about HIV treatment and prevention. To quote an old refrain, the more things change, the more they stay the same. This special episode of the Fast Track Cities podcast series will explore the results of a recent survey of more than 24,000 HIV-negative adults across 12 Western and Eastern European countries. The survey takes the same name from its core question, is HIV sorted? The verb sorted derived from English slang for having all things in order, all set, or all figured out. As its name implies, the is HIV sorted survey aimed to gain insights into whether the general public's current awareness of, perceptions about, knowledge around, and attitudes towards HIV meshed with the realities of HIV in the 21st century. In this episode, we will focus on results from six of the countries in which the survey was fielded, or more precisely, a fast-track city in each of these countries, namely Amsterdam, Berlin, Kiev, London, Madrid, and Paris. In reviewing the results, we will hear from clinicians, health department officials, and community activists from these cities, as well as global experts, whose consensus is that we must work to update HIV literacy amongst the general public, bringing it current to the 21st century. These six fast-track cities are part of a global network of more than 300 cities and municipalities striving to reach ambitious joint United Nations program on HIV-AIDS or UN-AIDS targets on a trajectory towards achieving the United Nations goal of ending AIDS as a public health threat by 2030. Dr. Jose Zuniga is president of the International Association of Providers of AIDS Care, or IAPAC, and the survey's principal investigator. The survey was jointly conducted by IAPAC, which is the core technical partner of the Fast Track Cities Initiative, and Gilead Sciences. In Dr. Zuniga's opinion, the survey results are of critical importance because they can inform ongoing efforts to end urban HIV epidemics. Results from the HIV sorted survey are a real wake-up call to all of us who are involved in efforts not just to attain the UNAIDS targets, but ultimately to stem the tide of new HIV infections across multiple key populations. The importance of the results from the HIV sorted survey cannot be overestimated. It is critical for us to understand what the general public believes about HIV in the 21st century, as well as their perceptions about people living with HIV in order to address any misperceptions and or stigmatizing behaviors that those beliefs may engender. The Is HIV Sorted survey solicited insights from members of the general public across three key areas of interest. The first of these areas examined perceptions about people living with HIV. In this regard, there were some sobering results around HIV-related stigma. For example, 83% of respondents in Amsterdam said they would feel uncomfortable dating a person living with HIV, the highest percentage across the six cities, with Berlin at the lowest, with 48% of respondents expressing such a concern. In 2020, effective HIV treatment with antiretroviral therapy administered early after diagnosis can help a person living with HIV achieve a normal lifespan. Additionally, optimal adherence to antiretroviral therapy can suppress the virus to what is referred to as 
an undetectable level, which can both curb disease progression and prevent sexual transmission of HIV from HIV-positive to HIV-negative sexual partners. This fact supports a public health campaign known as U equals U, which translates into undetectable equals untransmittable. The community-led campaign is helping to destigmatize HIV among both seropositive and seronegative individuals. Mark Vermeulen, the executive director of AIDS Fonds, SOA AIDS Nederland, based in Amsterdam, is concerned about the general public's lack of knowledge about current facts related to HIV. He is also frustrated with the persistent level of stigma experienced by people living with HIV in Amsterdam and globally. There are still too many people in the Netherlands that are not aware of the fact that if a person living with HIV is on treatment and is undetectable, that he or she cannot transmit the virus anymore. And I think um, spreading that news and creating that awareness uh, is not only empowering for, for people living with HIV, uh, but also will create more support and more understanding of why it is so important to really test and treat everybody uh, living with HIV. Um, and I think it, it depends on, on uh, how we are able to transmit that, uh, that message. So I think uh, making that part of, of all the communications that we do and all the media interventions that we do, uh, really asking for awareness around the fact that people living with HIV can no longer transmit HIV when they are on, on effective treatment uh, is, is quite a crucial uh, element of, of moving forward in the HIV response and making it both um, something that we can address uh, and reduce the stigma, uh, but also empowers uh, people living with HIV. Negative perceptions regarding people living with HIV extend beyond the dating scene. In Kiev, for example, 49% of respondents expressed negative attitudes about working with people living with HIV, and almost three-quarters of respondents in that city believe that people living with HIV should not work in healthcare-related jobs. Olga Rudnyeva, executive director of the Elena Pinchuk Anti-AIDS Foundation in Kiev, is concerned that such negative attitudes, beyond denying people living with HIV their dignity and livelihood, also help to drive the HIV epidemic underground. She explains the general public's perceptions about people living with HIV in Kiev and across the Ukraine. Uh, let's start from the very beginning. According to Ukrainian law, people who uh, have HIV status are not supposed to work in the healthcare sector. So they should make it you know, known and uh, they have difficulties to work in a healthcare sector. That's number one. Number two, yes, people are still hiding their HIV status because of stigma associated with it, uh, because of still people are thinking that this is a problem of drug users and sex workers. So most of the people think that HIV is a problem of behavior. So that's why people are still hiding their status. That means that if people don't know their status, they cannot get adequate treatment, they cannot get information, about their status and uh, so they can pass the virus. So this is a reality. It's much better compared to what we had in 2004, you know, when we started the massive campaign in media. So at least people now understand the difference between HIV and AIDS and people understand how you can contract HIV. But stigma associated with the virus is still pretty high in Ukraine, and it's even worse in small cities and villages. So in big cities, it's much easier for a person to, to live and to work if he or she has HIV status. Prominent medical and public health institutions, including IAPAC and the World Health Organization, have recommended against criminalizing people living with HIV. However, survey data revealed diverging views between survey respondents from Western and Eastern Europe where significant numbers supported prosecution for people living with HIV, who transmit HIV, who expose HIV-negative people to HIV, and or who do not disclose their HIV status to sexual partners. Despite relatively more liberal attitudes in London, one in three respondents still favored prosecuting people living with HIV who do not disclose their HIV-positive status to a sexual partner. 
Dr. Jane Anderson, a consultant physician at Homerton University Hospital in London and the co-chair of Fast Track London, contextualizes the negative impact that legalized discrimination against people living with HIV can have on the AIDS response. Given that we know that people who are on effective therapy and who have an undetectable viral load pose no infection risk to other people, are we getting that message out adequately? And I think the answer to that is no, we're not. We're not getting it out even amongst our clinical colleagues in other disciplines. So um, we know that there's an enormous knowledge gap here. And how do we do that? So your point here is how policymakers approach this issue. It may be that it isn't in the hands of policymakers. It may be in the hands of practitioners, of the community, of us as the medical profession to be talking much more widely about this. Um, we haven't had a major campaign about HIV in the UK for many, many years. There's been no general public uh, campaign. And we do know that there is a knowledge gap about what's happening about HIV in general in the UK. So it may be that it's time to get accurate factual information out into the hands of the general public. We have a number of public education campaigns in London. They tend to be very closely uh, targeted to the populations that maybe most need to see them. Uh, in particular, Do It London is a really um, far-reaching campaign trying to get accurate information into the hands of people who are most likely to be affected by HIV. Um, I would say that this represents a significant improvement in attitudes towards HIV across our city. And of course, it's far from perfect. But I think if you've got that data, even a few years ago, it wouldn't have been such a high figure. So I think we are making inroads. I think it's a big education piece. Uh, we have campaigns in London. The Fast Track Cities Initiative is looking to um, uh, do more work now to combat HIV-associated stigma. So my hope is that if you were to repeat this survey in a few years' time, we would see a very different and much more positive response. The survey data are not altogether surprising to Rico Gustav, who is the executive director of the Global Network of People Living with HIV, or GNP+. The fear of HIV, he says, often characterizes the views shared about people living with HIV. These data show that HIV-related stigma remains strong and is a major structural driver of urban HIV epidemics. But he and other community advocates hope that technological and medical breakthroughs can amplify their efforts to end the HIV epidemic. The survey results are a reminder to reach beyond the HIV community so that HIV literacy campaigns can mitigate and eventually end HIV-related stigma. Fear of HIV is still dominating much of the conversation, either locally or nationally. And you can see that clearly in the TVs and how they portray HIV as, um, as still, like just like in, in the 80s, uh, basically. Prevention message still use scare tactics. We all know that's ineffective, but people still believe that scaring children and young adults is the best way to keep them off what they believe to be risky behavior, right? And we clearly see the correlations between governments who are committing um, to combat stigma actually see a reduction in, in, in stigma within their own society, in their own countries. And some government actually understands that ending the epidemic can only happen if we combat stigma towards people with HIV in key populations. And they really integrate that belief into the national strategic plan, the way that they, they design services and to pass policies and stuff. We still have a lot of work to do to make sure that people understand what it means to live with the virus and how it's impossible in real life for the virus to transmit when we are undetectable sexually. The Is HIV Sorted Survey's second key area of interest focused on health literacy. This involves having access to and using health-related information to inform and improve health-related behaviors. Alarmingly, the survey results speak to suboptimal HIV health literacy, and its impact extends well beyond negative perceptions about people living with HIV. For clinicians and community activists, 
It is worrisome that such a pervasive lack of understanding persists around a disease that is defined in most of the global north as a chronic condition akin to diabetes. Moreover, public health experts are alarmed by an apparent paucity of health-seeking behaviors among the general public. Anne Souri serves as the deputy mayor for health in the city of Paris. She believes that more robust campaigns are needed in France's capital city to educate the general public about the current realities of HIV. Une première question est la question des personnes migrantes à laquelle j'ai l'impression avoir déjà un peu répondu. Regarding the question about the general public, it is a question of how to promote information, then screening, and making the fact clear that we no longer die of AIDS currently in France because we can be treated. So it is often young people who have not seen their elders die of HIV that need to be more sensitized. Les jeunes, par exemple, n'ont pas vu les, j'allais dire, leurs aînés mourir. There is significant education to conduct for the general public, which is not, for the moment, sufficient enough and which is not focused only on specific populations. This is really a question of transforming culture. I think in France, the taboo on sexuality continues to exist. That is why I think all the struggles, including feminists, the question of femicide, Questions of everything that happens in private life contribute to the fact of being able at any given moment to assume not only her sexuality, but what can go with it. For example, screening and prevention. For example, condoms. C'est-à-dire le dépistage, c'est-à-dire la prévention, c'est-à-dire le préservatif. As previously noted, Successful HIV treatment with antiretroviral therapy that yields an undetectable level of HIV in the blood can both halt disease progression and prevent sexual transmission of HIV from HIV-positive to HIV-negative sexual partners. The scientific name for this concept is treatment as prevention. The concept is grounded in recent clinical trials, which demonstrate that among couples where one partner is living with HIV and the other is not, Researchers have observed zero HIV sexual transmission when the HIV-positive partner had a consistently undetectable viral load. A balance is required in the type of educational efforts being advanced in relation to HIV prevention, according to Ute Hiller, the managing director of Berlin AIDS Hilfe, a community-based organization in Berlin. Over the past couple of years, she believes that perhaps more emphasis may have been placed on pre-exposure prophylaxis, or PrEP, which can decrease HIV acquisition when taken as prescribed by HIV-negative individuals, than the emphasis given to treatment as prevention. Ms. Hiller describes how promoting treatment as prevention evidence can support the U equals U message and reinforce a broader dialogue about optimizing HIV prevention. A lot of efforts went into the education on uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis, and we have been very successful here. There's more than 5,000 MSM in Berlin uh, are on PrEP. However, some feel that we focus on PrEP too much and uh, was a disadvantage to the education on therapy as prevention. That's what we were told about uh, by people living with HIV. They say PrEP is in the foreground now, whereas U equals U has gone into the background. I don't think so. We always promoted both, but we really have, it's really um, our, our big goal. Always talk about prevention 3.0 that we taught it in uh, Germany, all these methods which are possible. But maybe PrEP was a new way, and so it was a point of much interesting in, um, to the HIV negative uh, individuals. We take that earnestly. We have to refocus again and put more, much more effort in this prevention 3.0 thing as a whole thing for everybody. So promote condoms, U equals U, and PrEP at the same time. Jorge Garrido, director of Apoyo Positivo, a community-based organization in Madrid, further explains the powerful resonance of the U equals U message, notably in relation to historically highly stigmatized populations of people living with HIV. 
also it, it was happening with the undetectability. Uh, the community was uh, talking about the U equals U before the, the most part of the clinicians were doing it in the country and of course it's the administration. One of the cases that we are almost solving now, but for instance, one person living with HIV cannot drive a taxi or a bus, a public transport in the city because of the law that is related HIV to other uh, infections as Ebola. Uh, so they just need to change a small word in in a, an official paper in a, in a place where it's registered like this type of uh, infection. And this probably could change easily, but we are advocating for this change since a long time ago because normally it doesn't happen any, any problem. No, It's not like the people is asking uh, everybody if he's linked with HIV when they are trying to get this type of job. But we can find uh, every year situations related with uh, stigma and discrimination because of this law. Um, many of the cases, people that go goes to the dentist and they have maybe the date at uh, 10 in the morning and they are the last ones uh, getting the attention because of the HIV. Uh, also in the public hospitals in, in many different situations or uh, we also work with trans people in our organization and they were trying to donate blood in the hospital once and they didn't allow them because they were living in the same house with someone living with HIV. So I think there is a lot of information in general population but then you face that the stigma is also in those places where the HIV people is is being visible when they go to the healthcare system or when they go to the administration to solve any problem. And then is when they face stigma. So I realized if you are living with HIV and who has to, to help you with, uh, with the healthcare system or, or the administration is the first one stigmatizing you, probably I, will, I, I wouldn't say anything to the rest of the society about my status uh, because of that. So it's, it's a daily problem. Uh, many, maybe the rest of the world thinks that it's something just related when you find someone and you find, fall in love. But I think it's even more difficult because if you really fall in love, people that love you is going to understand uh, everything. But when it's a daily problem, uh, it's something that affects your autonomy and your way of living and your work and everything related with your life. The U equals U message is slowly taking root among HIV-affected communities worldwide through efforts advanced by community-based organizations such as Apoyo Positivo, as well as IAPAC and other professional medical and nursing associations. Awareness about U equals U among the general public lags far behind the medical and scientific community. In London, for example, 46% of survey respondents believe that people living with HIV who are on successful HIV treatment with antiretroviral therapy can still transmit HIV to HIV-negative partners. Berlin had the highest level of respondents among the six cities that were surveyed, with 62% who are unaware of the preventative benefit of successful HIV treatment. Here again, Ute Hiller, the managing director of Berlin AIDS Hilfe, speaks to local multi-stakeholder efforts to promote U equals U. With Berlin coming fast track city, we intensified our efforts by sharing U equals U messages on Facebook and other social medias, uh, wherever is possible. We promote U, uh, U equals U in our counseling offers uh, and also in telephone calls, uh, in chats or personal. Uh, personal. On further possibilities, this is in our test counseling offer. We reached MSM and also in general population there. We also promote uh, that in lectures held in companies to invite us to talk about HIV to the employees. However, it's not easy work to work against HIV-related stigma, which remains a total challenge. Not surprisingly, an overall lack of HIV health literacy uncovered by the Is HIV Sorted survey extended into startling statistics regarding health-seeking behaviors among survey respondents. These behaviors include testing for HIV, the use of condoms, and promoting awareness about the tools to protect against acquiring HIV. According to the survey results, 61% of respondents from Paris and 59% from Kiev reported ever having been tested for HIV. London had the lowest percentage of respondents who indicated they have tested for HIV at 19%. Elsewhere in Europe, 23% of respondents in Amsterdam, 33% in Madrid, 
and 36% in Berlin said they had been tested for HIV at least once. In some cities, more than half of those HIV tests were conducted over five years ago, with responses as high as 61% in Amsterdam and 63% in London. Homerton University's Dr. Anderson says health officials in London are working to address the challenges posed by delayed HIV diagnosis. We know that we have a real issue with late diagnosis in our city. Uh, And although we are now much, much um, improved in terms of the numbers of new infections that we are seeing in the city, we know that many people who are living with HIV are being diagnosed much later than they should be. And we know that that's the case, particularly amongst um, uh, heterosexual people um, and black and ethnic minority communities. So we're very um, uh, keen to think how best to overcome this issue of late diagnosis. And as the numbers of people who are living with undiagnosed HIV in our city goes down, so the importance of tailoring our interventions to make sure that the people who need to actually hear the messages and to act on them um, are able to do so. And I think that is the real challenge we've got at the moment. So we've just commissioned through the Fast Track Cities initiative, um, a new program of collaboration projects between communities and between health service providers, which we hope will allow us to have a much better uh, understanding and a much better reach into those um, communities where late diagnosis is a real problem. So it's acknowledged. It's something we absolutely need to be uh, doing more of. And we've got some work that's literally just starting, which we hope is going to make a difference. For Dr. Anderson, London's HIV testing data are directly linked to the long-standing absence of a comprehensive nationwide HIV literacy and promotion strategy that can sustain activities at the municipal level. Much of the issue and the work for HIV prevention and health promotion sits now in local areas. Um, We have a national sexual health uh, roadmap framework but we don't have a national HIV strategy. And I think that is something that uh, we really lack. And it is something we've been talking about, really trying to push for over the last few years. What we do have, however, is a commitment from central government to get us to zero new infections by 2030. And our health minister has made that commitment and has continued to make that commitment. However, we have not yet seen additional funds and resources going in behind that commitment. And so I think we have got a gap between the aspiration of central government and actual delivery on the ground. So I think it's um, it's a really important question. Uh, but I think you may find now, because of the devolution of um, HIV literacy and health promotion campaigns to local areas that cities maybe have even more power and more um, ability to message because they actually now have got more local control over some of these important messages. However, cities are not being well enough funded in order to do all the work that needs to be done. So there is a public health funding gap in this country, and that means that local areas are often really under-resourced to do the work that they would like to do to carry this forward. So there's a big gap between central government aspiration, central government funding, and local area implementation. The survey data also indicate a downward trend in condom use among people engaging in sexual activities with new partners of unknown HIV status. Although respondents reported predominantly single-digit numbers of new sexual partners over the last year, a significant percentage said they rarely or never used condoms, ranging from 13% in Paris to 23% in London. Paris's deputy mayor for health, Anne Souri, speaks to how people among that city's migrant community, particularly women, can face greater obstacles for accessing and utilizing HIV prevention and other services. More than 80% of the migrant issue, which in France is the subject of a highly discriminatory policy, 
deals with the infection of migrants with HIV after their arrival on French soil. For the people migrants who have arrived on the soil français, it is done in general more than 80% après leur arrivée. Particularly for migrant women on the street who are often subjected to violence and rape. We have set up a reception service in Paris at the Hotel Dieu for women who are pregnant and are on the street. Nous avons par exemple monté à Paris, à l'Hôtel Dieu, une, un, un service d'accueil pour les femmes qui sont enceintes et à la rue, donc 90% sont... 90% of these women are women from sub-Saharan Africa who are often subjected to violence and rape and who are often not treated, including for childbirth. Qui ne sont pas prises en charge et qui ne sont pas prises en charge, y compris pour leur accouchement. Donc c'est ce que nous sommes en train de monter avec vraiment... The project aims to support these women in partnership with the new sexual health center to also facilitate access to PrEP. Indeed, PrEP is not only for gay men, it is also for women, pregnant women, and migrant women. It's also for women, it's also for women enceinte, and it's also for women migrants. And it's all these questions that we have to ask. These are all questions that the city of Paris seeks to tackle in order to eradicate this epidemic and discrimination. In this case, but also the discrimination that they have, evidently. Public understanding of HIV science often lags years behind or even decades behind the research. The survey found that overall knowledge about HIV prevention was low across all regions. In both Eastern and Western Europe, less than 10% of respondents were aware of pre-exposure prophylaxis, or PrEP, which, if taken consistently, can reduce the risk of HIV acquisition by up to 85%. The fast-track city with the greatest degree of PrEP awareness was Amsterdam, but only a mere 8% of respondents in that city were aware of PrEP. That's one reason city leaders are investing in scaling up PrEP outreach. Tom van Brentham from the Department of Health in Amsterdam says city leaders are learning from other fast-track cities like San Francisco as it expands PrEP outreach as part of its strategy for getting to zero. Well, we've always been involved on an international level and we try to reach out to other cities uh, around us, not just in Europe, but also on other continents. Um, for example, our PrEP initiative, we've learned from San Francisco uh, really uh, how to organize that, how to organize the uptake, how to work together with uh, uh, other partners in the field. Uh, so we're very grateful to them for uh, letting us learn from their experience. And the same might be true for the Dean Clinic, for example, in London, we are really trying to reshape the way our STD clinic works based on the results that, that London is achieving in the Dean Street Clinic. And uh, we, um, while we try to learn from other cities, we're also trying to share what we've learned and what we've done and share that with other cities. So we're very grateful for the Fast Track City Initiative to create that opportunity. The survey's third key area of interest explored whether HIV maintained any level of importance in relation to its public health significance and the need for continued health investments. An average of 43% of all survey respondents consider HIV a serious threat to public health in their respective cities, with the highest level of concern reported in Paris at 73% and the lowest level in London at 26%. These findings are not surprising as French authorities have struggled to close the gap in Paris, particularly among migrants. London's more optimistic outlook likely reflects the city's ongoing success, including its April 2019 attainment of programmatic targets set by the United Nations related to HIV testing, treatment, and viral suppression. Known as the 90-90-90 targets, the first 90 target translates into a requirement that 90% of people living with HIV be aware of their status. For London, that percent stands at 95%. The second 90 target relates to 90% of people who know their HIV status being on antiretroviral therapy. In London, 98% of people living with HIV who are aware of their status are on antiretroviral therapy. The third 90% target seeks to achieve viral suppression among 90% of people living with HIV who know their status and are on antiretroviral therapy, the goal of successful HIV treatment. 
Here again, London exceeded the United Nations target, with 98% of HIV-positive Londoners on antiretroviral therapy having achieved viral suppression. Still, HIV remains a public health concern this many decades after the first HIV cases were reported among previously healthy young men in Los Angeles, New York City, and San Francisco in the early 1980s. In 2019, the United Nations estimates there were 1.7 million new HIV infections and 690,000 AIDS-related deaths globally. Despite what he labels as disease fatigue, IAPAX President Dr. Zuniga is heartened that survey respondents widely continue to recognize HIV as a public health concern. Amongst the sobering and somewhat startling data that were revealed through the Is HIV Sorted survey are some good news. In essence, in relation to the way in which the general public assigns a level of concern to HIV at the local, national, and global levels. And so, The reality that so many survey respondents indicated that HIV remains a concern for them and that governments should maintain investment in the HIV response is good news that we will leverage in order to ensure that as an advocacy uh, component of the Fast Track Cities Initiative, we promote active political will, political commitment, the dedication of resources that are necessary to continue the fight against HIV and AIDS, and as important, the community engagement necessary to maintain that commitment over time. The survey also revealed widespread support for national-level funding of local HIV responses, with most respondents across the six cities saying that funding should be a priority for their national governments. On average, from Amsterdam to Berlin, Kiev to London, and Madrid to Paris, 74% of respondents support ongoing government investments into local and national HIV responses. For Rico Gustav from GNP+, HIV community advocates can harness this public support to convince parliamentarians, legislators, and other policymakers to stay on track as cities, municipalities, states, and nations accelerate their HIV responses. I think engaging with public officials to continue financing the work, the advocacy work of civil society and communities is important. Um, in any countries, government change, donor change, but the, the communities uh, doesn't change. So it, it remains the constant factor that consistently, consistently do the work uh, to ensure that people have access to necessary service to continue improving quality of their life. So one thing that the Fast Track City can do and to include their advocacy message to um, mayors and government that is extremely important not only to finance HIV action, but to also finance it through the, the work of civil society and, and the communities. Um, because again, I mean, government will change, but if you keep on investing on communities, they will stay there and they will make sure that whoever's going to come, the next administration will be held into account and there will be uh, advocacy work uh, to, to hold them in accountable as well. So, should we consider HIV sorted? Based on the Is HIV Sorted survey results highlighted in this special podcast episode, it is clear there are miles to go before anyone can claim that HIV is indeed sorted. Stigma remains a persistent challenge for people living with and affected by HIV. There is an urgent need to update HIV literacy among the general public, and regrettably, We're not yet consistently using all the tools in our toolbox to end urban HIV epidemics. But we do still count on the general public's consensus that HIV remains a public health threat, which can be leveraged to do more as we enter the epidemic's fifth decade. IAPAC's Dr. Zuniga sums it up as follows. We have the tools at our disposal to end local and national HIV epidemics. But doing so requires the courage of our conviction to maintain a response that is entering its fifth decade. It requires community engagement that allows for people living with and affected by HIV AIDS to not just be at the table and heard, but actively engaged in the delivery of HIV services. It requires sustained investment on the part of governments to ensure we have the resources necessary to mount the response that will get us to the end of AIDS as a public health threat by 2030. And it requires ongoing political will and sustained commitment by our elected leaders 
to ensure that HIV does not fall off the radar as a public health concern. An HIV diagnosis is not a death sentence. HIV treatment today, taken as prescribed, can guarantee HIV-positive individuals a near-normal lifespan and, as important, prevent transmission of HIV by individuals who achieve viral suppression. If you have been diagnosed with HIV and are not currently on HIV treatment, ask your clinician about what HIV treatment may be right for you. You may also visit www.iapac.org to learn more about HIV treatment and how you can live a healthy life with HIV.